Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you what I do for makeup lately and what has been kind of my current go-to routine when I'm just wanting to feel a lot more comfortable out of the house. My eye bags are on another level in dark circles with um, our second born coming, our second child being born. Um, she's actually a fantastic sleeper and has been a really, really good baby, but anybody who has been there knows that it's just a little bit less sleep than what you're used to. So yeah, I'm feeling really good, but I'm excited to show you guys what I have been doing for makeup lately, especially since there are a few products that I'm really excited about and have loved using for the last couple months. So if you're interested in seeing that, let's get to it. All right, so I have already moisturized and wa washed and moisturized my face. I'm gonna go into priming, and sometimes I do my eye makeup first, sometimes I do my face makeup. Unless I'm doing like a really bold eye look, typically I will do my face makeup first. So this is just a primer I got, I think in my Ipsy bag. I actually canceled my Ipsy, I just wasn't really using the products because I don't wear makeup a lot anymore, like on an everyday basis. So I just felt like it was kind of a waste, but um, I'm pretty sure this is one of the things I got in my last Ipsy bag that I did receive, and this is the Trust Fund Beauty Give Me Good Face Face Primer. This is just a very standard silicone based pr face primer. It is clear and I just like to dab this in all over my face, mainly focusing on the center of my face where I have large pores, etc. Then I'm going to move on to something that I mentioned in my last video and that is my Revlon Color Stay Foundation. I am back to loving this, especially since they updated the packaging. Um, now it has a pump which makes it a much easier foundation to use and I'm going to be using this in 150 buff. It's a pretty pale shade, but I am pretty pale right now, and then this does oxidize a little bit on me, so it's perfect for that. And then to dab this in, I'm going to be using the L'Oreal, I think this is called like the Perfect Blender or something. It's just a beauty sponge, and I have this dampened. I do like two full pumps on the back of my hand. I find that when I use a sponge, it definitely soaks up more of the product, but I just like the application a lot better than a brush, so I'm willing to waste a little bit of product for the finish. And I'm using this in the combination oily formula. Alright, let's fool everybody that we got a full night's sleep. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm going to be using this in the second to lightest shade, I believe. This is Fair Neutral. This is a fantastic concealer. It's one of the only concealers that I don't have to apply a ton of product to feel like I get enough coverage. Of course, I have severely dark under eyes, so I feel like no concealer is ever going to cover it entirely. But this comes pretty darn close. And this will oxidize as well, so it looks super bright right now, but it, it definitely um, will get darker as it dries. I'll just dab it over some of the areas that I just couldn't quite get enough coverage with my foundation. Then I just kind of take whatever's left over on the sponge and I'll just kind of go over my eyelids. I tend to get really dark eyelids as well and I just find that whether or not I'm wearing eyeshadow I like to apply something, especially if I'm wearing foundation and concealer just because I feel like it helps even it all out and helps make my whole eye area look a little bit brighter. So then after I dab out all of my creases, I'll take my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and I just dab my sponge right into the loose powder in here and go over my under eye area. I would call it baking except that I pretty much wipe it away immediately. This is just, I find, the best way to prevent creasing. I still get creasing because I have really deep set eyes which adds to the whole darkness, but this is the best technique I have found to keep the creasing at bay. Then I like to take my e.l.f. complexion brush and go into the powder again, tap off any excess into the cap, and then just kind of give my whole face a light dusting. I find that this helps my foundation um, to set so that when I go to apply bronzer and blush and any other face powders, they apply a lot more smoothly without a lot of catching onto the foundation. Next, I'm going to take another product that I mentioned in my last video, something that I've really been enjoying. This is the Physicians Formula Bronze Booster Highlight and Contour Palette. And I like all the shades in here. I'm not a huge fan of the packaging because the lid just doesn't quite open enough, but I'll work with it because I really like the formula of all of the powders. They're all matte. And I'm just going to take my small tapered brush from e.l.f. and I'm going to go into the lightest color and kind of go back over my eyes. This will kind of help further wipe away any excess powder that is still remaining without taking away a lot of coverage or anything. Because I need all the brightness I can get underneath my eyes. 
Then I'm gonna take my newest makeup brush, one that I've really been enjoying, this is the e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush. I got this at Target, and as you can see, it's tapered on the side there, but it's still nice and fluffy. And I like to take this into the contour shade in the middle and apply that. I'm gonna just go around the perimeters of my face, anywhere that I kinda wanna create a shadow. And I'll take that same cool shade, I'm still working with the contour color, and just kinda go along my jawline. Next is bronzer. Now, of all these three shades, the bronze color is definitely the most pigmented. So this one I'm still kind of figuring out how to work with. I literally just dabbed my brush in there barely at all. And it just, as you can see, does not take a lot of effort to build this color up. So I need to be very careful, but I do really, really like it. I like the warmth that it gives my cheeks. But like I said, compared to the other two especially, it has a ton of pigmentation. Apply a little bit of that on my forehead. Especially when my hair is pulled back like this, I find that if I don't apply some color to my forehead, it can just look a little strange if my cheeks are bronzed. Then I'm gonna be applying my blush, and just to keep it simple, I'm gonna to continue to use the Flawless Face Brush from e.l.f. This is another brush blush that I got in, and it needs to be Ips, oh my goodness, an Ipsy bag a while ago. It's called Cosmopolitan, and it's by the brand Model Co. Just a very bubblegum pink color. This has a lot of pigmentation to it as well. It's a matte blush, so I have to be a little bit careful with this one. Focus it pretty much where I put the bronzer, but a little bit higher up and a little bit farther forward. Then I'm gonna move on to my highlighter. This is from Revolution, and it's the Shimmer Brick in Radiant. Love all the colors in here, but this is also incredibly pigmented, so I focus more on the lighter shades because the other two tend to be a little bit dark for me. And I'm gonna be taking my e.l.f. Real Tech, or my, sorry, my Real Techniques setting brush, go into the lighter two, and apply that to the top of my cheekbones. And a little bit on my nose and a little bit on my cupid's bow. So my camera battery just died. And fun fact, while I was changing the battery, my neck started to itch and I realized my shirt was on backwards. So switch that around. Let's get back to the makeup, but where were we? Um, I just applied my highlighter. And then what I've been doing is working on my brows. And what I've been enjoying using for my brows lately, if I can find it, is the Maybelline Brow Precise Micro Crayon. I was using the Define a Brow and then I used it all up. Um, and this has been working really well. I really like that it has the spoolie end instead of just the comb. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill my brows in, depending on how long it takes. Might speed over this part because it can be kind of time consuming. And actually I think what I'm gonna do, I didn't, I used to do this and now I don't really anymore, but I'm gonna try it again today. I'm gonna highlight or outline my brows first using the Ivory Lace Highlighter Crayon. I got this again a very long time ago in an Ipsy bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. I just feel like it does help everything look a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna blend out that highlighter color that I put on. It's kinda like a creamy pencil consistency, so it's pretty easy to blend out with your finger. For eyeshadow, I'm gonna be using my Lorac Matte Pro Palette. Um, I really like shimmer on my eyes, at least on my lid. I almost always wear a shimmer if I'm gonna be wearing eyeshadow. So even though I don't love that this is all matte, I really like pairing this with my shimmer brick that I got from Revolution like I was talking about before. These eyeshadows are amazing. Um, I'm just gonna go in with linen and I'm gonna set that all over my eyes. Use my Elf Small Tapered Brush. It's obviously a ginormous brush, but I just want to kind of give it another wash of color before I apply the darker color, the darker shades. Again, it's just kind of the same principle as setting my face before applying bronzer. It just helps everything to blend a lot better. So I'm going to start off by taking my Lab 2 Just Blending Brush. I got this at Walmart. It's in their like slightly more expensive area. Um, so I think this was, I don't know exactly how much this was, but this is a blending brush and I'm going to be going when, in with Latte and taking that in my crease as a transition shade for kind of like a normal makeup routine. I don't wear a lot of my eyeshadow for my eyes, but I do like a little something. I feel like it just helps everything go together. Taking the same brush, I'm going to be getting Corduroy, which is the dark matte brown color right next to Latte. You don't need very much of this again, and I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to focus this a little bit lower to create a little bit more depth in my eye. 
Now I could certainly stop there, but I'm gonna go one shade darker and grab for chocolate, the very dark brown color, and I'm gonna take that on my e.l.f. crease brush. Very similar concept of the brush that I just used, but this is a little bit smaller. Let me show you a side by side. So I really like this for the outer corner and blending just really precisely in my crease. And this color is really pigmented, so as you can see, I don't need very much. I'm just gonna do this in my outer V. I've never been somebody who can just wear all matte eyeshadows, even though that's probably a more mature thing. I really like shimmer, so I am gonna be taking the second lightest shade in my Revolution Shimmer Brick, uh, this pink color, and I'm gonna apply that all over my lid. I don't know where I got this brush, it's just a flat, like packing brush that I got really cheap, I'm sure, somewhere. And then I'm gonna take the very lightest shade and just go underneath my brow bone a little bit as a highlight and in my inner corner. The liquid liner that I'm gonna be using is the same liquid liner that I've been using for a very long time. In fact, there's almost no label on it anymore. <laughs> this is the Jordana uh, Cat Eye in black just plain black. Again, it's almost completely gone as far as the label goes, but this is a very good eyeliner. And I'm just gonna do a very tiny little wing. Let's see if those are anywhere close to even. And then I'm gonna apply my mascara. Although wait, before I do that, I am gonna put a little bit of a nude eyeliner in my lower waterline. This is the Scandalize by Rimmel. It's just the nude shade. And then I'm gonna curl my eyelashes and apply my L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. And that is honestly it. I don't even wear any kind of like lip gloss or anything on my lips on a regular basis. Um, this is pretty much what I wear if I'm gonna be leaving the house. And then I'll usually just finish it off with some setting spray. This is the Urban Decay setting spray. I'll use this or my Mary Kay one, whichever one I have handy. Just to keep it on a little bit longer because I do tend to get my makeup rubbed off pretty easily. Um, so yeah, that is everything I do for my everyday makeup routine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.